Let's talk a little bit about this quilt. So you've got this piece, <clears throat> and the first thing I'm going to look at is for overall staining, any kinds of stains. Then I'm going to look for blood from a horse, because oftentimes these blankets are used as carriage blankets, right? And sometimes something happens, horse gets hurt, this kind of thing, grab the blanket, wipe off the blood. Very typical, okay? Now, the other thing I look for is quality, and I look for quality in everything. But I look for quality in quilts in this particular way. First of all, I look for how is the actual um, quilt pieced together or constructed. Are the colors done with vegetable dyes? Vegetable dyes usually have more of a lighter tone. They're not big and bright, a lighter tone. This piece has to date between 1850 and about 1870. Is that true in your family history? Okay, and, you, and I've never met your family. I didn't meet grandma, but I know what date this is, right? So people are surprised by that. And here's the real telltale sign. With your fingers, make an inch. Not an inch, with your fingers. And then I want you to put it down on your little quilt, and I want you to start counting stitches. A stitch in time saves nine. You should have nine stitches or more to an inch. That's how you know if you have a high quality quilt. These little phrases didn't come from nowhere. There's a reason for them. A stitch in time saves nine. So for my inch, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I see nine on the money here in this particular block. You might see in other blocks, in other areas of the quilting, maybe there's going to be seven, maybe there's going to be ten. But remember, you want to have similar stitches or similar people making the stitch. This is why you have all the church ladies of the same age making the quilts. Right? Because if you have somebody who's 25 like Sarah and somebody who's 105 like me making the same quilt, the 25 year old's going to be able to have more stitches within that inch. And not the 105 year old won't. That's why we have quilting circles, usually of women of the same age. Value on your quilt? About $1,200 to $1,500. Where do you keep it and do you refold it? I'd like you to refold your quilt in a different way, this way, and maybe this way, once every six months. I don't want you to put your quilt into a cedar chest or cedar closet. Cedar will repel bugs. The quilt will suck up, just like a sponge, the smell of the cedar. I raised a Civil War quilt. During the Civil War, men would take their quilts with them to war. And if they succumbed during the war, they were killed during the war, they would actually be wrapped in their, hair, in their mother's quilt and buried in the quilt. If they were wounded in the war, they would actually be taken with their quilt to an army hospital. And they would, in fact, actually write notes to their family as they were recovering, thinking they may not recover. And the quilt that I praised here, which was worth several tens of thousands of dollars, actually had all kinds of information about Jefferson Davis on it. Fantastic, right? And it was of similar material this particular quilt is made of period, 19th century period, pieces of fabric. Some of them are early 20th century, but some of them are from the Civil War era and the era of the Restoration, about 1865 to about 1885. They are actually, these pieces of material are actually made with vegetable dyes which indicates that the way in which they have a particular color is not from a synthetic dye, which is introduced in the latter part of the 19th century, but rather from vegetable dyes or natural dyes. So that's what makes your pieces a little bit more interesting. This is sometimes called a patchwork quilt, sometimes called log cabins, right? They look like little logs. And it has some dirt and some blood stains on them from horses, because most of these quilts were actually utilized as sort of coverings when you were riding in a horse and carriage. How'd you acquire the quilt, Katrina? I got it from a lady, 92 years old. It belonged to three of her aunts that was in Mobile, Alabama. Okay, so maybe they were the quilting bee. Yes. All right. So those ladies probably made these pieces. She's 92 or 93, the woman who you got it from, and her aunt would have been one more generation older, right? So we're, put, we're back into the 19th century, as we said. The quilt reveals that to us. Unfortunately, it's not a full quilt, so you're not looking at $4,000, $5,000. It's only the patchwork portion. You'd have to have it finished in order for it to be relatively valuable. In this condition, it's probably worth about $1,200 for the pieces. Wow. Still very nice.
Thank you. So your mother's saying that this quilt that I have here was made during the Civil War, so sometime between 1861 and 1865, let's say. Yeah, that's what she said. In Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and we're going to look at this quilt for a couple of things. Was her shop here in, in Pennsylvania or was her shop here? It was here. She's okay. from Pennsylvania. Okay. All right. Coincidence. Okay, so this particular piece has some horse blood stains on it, which is very typical of quilts like this. And this particular quilt also has these particular areas where you would put a rod through it and hang it. Right? Yeah, I think she put those on. Probably the sure. worst thing you can do for a quilt is hang it. The reason for that is because, well, it, it's nice to be able to display a quilt on a wall. It puts undue stress on all of the fibers of the material. So, if you want to keep the piece long term, it's better to put it up on a bed. <laughs> but lots of people will like to do it that way. Now, here's the beauty of this quilt. The beauty of this quilt is, in fact, the very, very small and consistent, very small and consistent stitches that you see. Also, the fact that the people making this quilt, and people plural, more than one, well, the way in which they actually will do all of these squares, they didn't do big quilting areas, they did very small quilting areas, which necessitates longer time, more people, and more stitches. And that's really what you're looking at. Why do we think that it is Civil War era? It has to do with the color and has to do with the actual um, pattern of the quilt. This particular pattern, relatively popular, this block style pattern that you're going to see, and of course these muted colors. Um, it's not until about the latter part of the 19th century that you see synthetic dyes and bright colors. You have very, very dull, muted, monochromatic colors on this particular quilt, which helps to date it to the Civil War era. Some of these quilts would also have information on them, actually written information on them. Um, some of the, the um, soldiers would actually put, you know, I was at the Battle of Appomattox, I was at the Battle of Antietam, I was at the Battle, whatever it might be. So you'll see that those are worth many, many tens of thousands of dollars because they have the history written right into them. This particular 19th century Civil War era quilt, and it could be from Pennsylvania, it could be from Maryland, she might have some documentation as well. Um, it, everything does speak to that time period and that age. Um, on today's market, you're probably looking at a quilt worth about $3,500 to $4,000. Thank you. My pleasure.